Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on synaptic mechanisms. In this video, what we're going to talk about is electrophysiological amperometry, which is basically a way of measuring the uh, release of uh, a molecule, such as a neurotransmitter, from a cell. Right, so to make the picture nice and easy to draw, we're just going to have a circular cell that is releasing some sort of, um, some sort of molecule. So we could, for instance, take a mast cell, uh, which releases histamine. So let's say this is a mast cell, but this would work just as well for an axon terminal of a neuron, for instance. It's just to make the picture look nice that we're using a mast cell, so that we can draw a nice round cell. Okay, so we stick our mast cell in a bath, basically. So it's in some sort of bath here. And of course, it wouldn't be that big, but um, just so that we can actually see the mass cell, I've drawn it much bigger. Okay, so you put it in this bath here, and then what you do is you put on top a carbon fiber electrode here. So this is a carbon fiber electrode. Okay, so this is carbon fiber electrode. And now what you're going to do is you're going to uh, Keep the carbon fiber electrode at a positive electrical potential. Okay, so we're going to make this positively charged, basically. So we're going to suck the electrons out of this carbon fiber electrode so that it becomes positively charged, so that it gains a positive electrical potential. So this has a positive electrical potential. Okay, now, uh, the solution that the mass cell is resting in it may well just have a neutral solution, uh, neutral electrical potential, basically. So this has a positive electrical potential. Okay, so when the mast cell is stimulated to release its neurotransmitter, and we can stimulate it to release its neurotransmitter by uh, coating it in a high concentration of potassium chloride. So let me just explain this. So, in order to understand this, we need to understand how the electrical potential difference across the cell membrane is built up. Okay, so let's say here is our mast cell. Right, so basically the electrical potential difference across this cell membrane arises fundamentally because you have differing concentrations of sodium and potassium inside and outside of the cell. So the extracellular concentration of sodium here is approximately 145 millimolar, okay? Whereas the intracellular sodium concentration is approximately 12 millimolar. The extracellular potassium concentration is approximately 4 millimolar, and the intracellular potassium concentration is approximately 155 millimolar. So basically, sodium is much higher outside the cell by about 12 times, and potassium is much higher inside the cell by about 40 times. Now, what's going to happen is that in the cell membrane, we are going to put in channels which are always open to both sodium and potassium. So let's say this is a sodium channel. So this is a sodium leak channel, as they're often called. So it's just a channel that's always open to sodium. So this is a sodium leak channel. Right, so let me cover this in a certain color. So in red here, we have this sodium leak channel. And then this channel over here, which we'll have in green, this is a uh, potassium leak channel, okay? Right. So, what's going to happen then? Well, we've got a larger concentration of sodium. Oh, by the way, let's assume that initially both solutions are neutral, okay? So we're looking at how we actually build up this electrical potential. So initially, both solutions are neutral. So these, both of these ions, sodium and potassium, they will have counter ions, which will be chloride. So uh, there'll be loads of chloride anions inside and loads of chloride anions outside, and they will basically uh, be neutralizing the sodium and the potassium. So it's not just like we've got loads of sodium ions just tipped in here. They will all be with the chloride anions. It's just that the uh, when you dissolve sodium chloride in water, the sodium and chloride ions separate out. So they will all have counter ions. But the counter ions, and this is actually important, the counter ions cannot move across the membrane. Only the cations can move across the membrane. So what's going to happen is because of the concentration difference, in sodium 
uh, cations here, you're going to get a greater movement of sodium into the cell. And this is simply by probability and chance. If you've got a very high concentration of potassium over here, and a low concentration of potassium here, which is more likely that a, potas a, that a sodium ion will move into the cell, or a sodium ion will move out of the cell? Well, clearly it's going to be that the sodium ion will move into the cell. So you're going to get a net movement of sodium in. So you're going to move sodium ions in, basically. Similarly, for potassium, the concentration inside is 40 times bigger than the concentration of potassium extracellularly. So you've got a very high concentration of potassium here, and a low concentration of potassium extracellularly. So just by probability, you're more likely to get potassium moving out than in. So you're going to get a net movement of potassium out. OK, so sodium moves in, potassium moves out. Which one is going to be bigger, is my question. Well, it's going to be the potassium. Firstly, because the gradient is bigger, because this one is 40 times bigger than this one. So the gradient, the concentration gradient that is favouring movement out, is bigger in the case of potassium than it is in sodium. Okay. In addition, there are actually more potassium leaky channels than there are sodium leaky channels. And that also is going to lead to uh, a greater movement of uh, potassium out uh, than you get sodium in. So overall, the movement of potassium out is going to be bigger than the movement of sodium in. Okay, so you're going to move a net amount of positive charge out because if you're moving more potassium ions out than you're moving sodium in, then that means that overall the number of positive charges that have moved out of the cell in the form of potassium is greater than the number of positive charges that have moved into the cell in the form of sodium. Okay, so that means uh, that you're going to overall have moved some positive charge into the extracellular fluid and have moved it out of the intracellular fluid. And we'll continue this discussion in the next video.